if I was given $1,000 right now to start my poop scooping business, nothing more, here's the steps I would take. You might even have $900 left after getting your equipment, getting your bank account, getting your merchant processing, your DBA set up, and all of these items set up. Now your goal is to spend as little of that as possible and work to get to $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 by spending as little of that as possible. You need to do a search on, on various databases online for trademark laws and for trademark marked businesses. For example, in the poop scooping business, we were initially pooper troopers, which already had a trademark way up in Seattle, Washington. We were here in McKinney, Texas. But within a year, they had found us and sent us letters, angry letters, that we were using their trademark. And so go and check the national trademark database and make sure your name is not currently trademarked. With a thousand bucks, you don't do anything more than that. You get your DBA, that shows that you've been in business for XYZ period of time before any future trademark may be existed. Maybe in the future you can strive to own that trademark. I would not worry about that for the first few years of your business, frankly. I'd go to the county and or I'd go, I'd go online to the county website. Here in the state of Texas, you can do this at the county level or at the state level. You get a doing business as a DBA. This is the first lesson my dad taught me when I was 16 years old starting in business. You get a DBA doing business as at the county or the state level. In Texas, it's like $25 at the state level. And you get your business a DBA. Do you need an LLC or do you need to incorporate? Uh, when you get your DBA, you know, you pay 25 bucks or so to your local, local municipality, your county or your state, you pay that $25. You're gonna get lots of advertisements and you're gonna get lots of people tell you you need to incorporate. Incorporating costs 300 or so dollars, three to $500. You don't wanna do that when you have a thousand bucks. Frankly, you don't wanna do that when you have 5,000 bucks. It's not necessary. Be a sole proprietor and get a DBA. You do not need an LLC until you are really getting into some revenue. 10,000, 15,000, 50,000, 100,000. That's when you need to start talking about incorporating and it's an easy shift into an LLC uh, from just operating as a DBA sole proprietor. You always wanna look at managing and mitigating your risk. Uh, there is enormous liability, even in poop scooping. You've got dog bites, you've got vehicle accidents. There is risk, absolutely. Pr presumably you're going and scooping the yard, so the risk really is on you getting bit. Well, you're not going to sue yourself. So you have low risk in that. Uh, but you've got to have insurance on your vehicle. That's just part of being a, a, a responsible adult in America, frankly, is having insurance on your vehicle. So you, you've got that covered. Uh, that's the big, a big part of your liability. Now you've got the risk of dog bites. Um, again, you're not going to be really at any risk of causing any damage with your rake or with your bucket. And so uh, when it comes to getting things like general liability, which is the next thing you want to look at, general liability insurance on your business, you've got to have this, by the way, to get commercial clients. You usually have to have general liability. And if you have any employees, and in some states, you might even have to have workman's comp on yourself, but to get commercial clients, you've got to have this. But you don't need this in your first $1,000. That's, that's my opinion. I don't believe you need it. There's not a high enough risk. If you're the one and through a side hustle or starting out, you're going and scooping 5, 10, 25 clients yourself. Again, what are you going to do that's going to cause harm with your rake and your bucket? You're risking dog bites, and that's a risk that you have to take, but, but that's part of the business you got into. Uh, as you begin to get employees, as you begin to get 50, 60, 100 clients and beyond, You've got to look at general liability uh, to protect yourself, but also to begin to grow your commercial business. So the next thing you do after you get your DBA, you go and you open a bank account. You take your, at this point, $975, and you go and you open a bank, bank account. You go with a bank that you know, that you're comfortable with, usually a community bank. They're going to be a little more friendly, but not necessarily always. So you go and you open your bank account. The next thing you do is you need to set up your payment set structure. This is a huge mistake by most early business owners in all home services, is they do not properly set up system and process for their payment, how they're gonna collect payments. And then when you do start to set that up, it's done uh, 
somewhat in a way that you don't take cash flow and the speed of money into in, in, into the in, into account. And so you want your cash flow to be fast. You want to get paid as quickly, as fast, as soon as you've done the service. And so for that reason, I believe you should set up in a weekly type service or an ongoing bi-weekly, weekly, multiple times per week, set up a weekly or daily billing process where you bill every day for the previous day services or maybe every day for those services done that day. You want, you want to collect your money as soon as possible. But the key is, is put your, set up your, your payment system ahead of time and do not make the mistake of saying, well, you can leave it under the mat or I'll send you, I'll send you an invoice. You can send a check. That takes way too much time uh, going through the mail system or people forget they have, fa they have, they have very fast paced lives. The last thing they want to be worried about is paying their poop scooper. And so you tell them, they tell you they're going to leave it under the mat and they forget. That's easy to track when you have three and four and five customers. When you have 30 customers, even if it takes a year to get 30 customers, you're going to have problems keeping track of who didn't leave a check under the mat. I, I learned that the hard way with lawn mowing. My first 55 customers were leave a check under the mat and it became a full-time job collecting on 55 customers because people were forgetting. We were not the top the, at the top of their mind every Wednesday morning when we came to mow their yard or in this case to scoop their poop. So set up that payment process. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Home Depot. That's simple. Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, what, whatever home improvement store. And you're going to buy a commercial grade dustpan, 30 bucks, give or take. You're going to buy a $15 rake, small leaf rake, the most narrow you can get. They're usually about that wide. And you're going to buy trash bags, $15 for I think it's 80 or 100 trash bags, and you're in business. Now you just got to get clients. By the way, the, the, the trash bags, I don't know, they're 15, 20 bucks for all those. And so you've spent less than $100 at, at, at your home improvement store. I'm going to call it Home Depot because that's where I grew up going. Uh, worked at Lowe's for three weeks. Learned I wasn't very good at being an employee. But anyway, side note, you've gone to home improvement, you've gotten your equipment, You've got roughly 850, 875. If, if, if you really looked at discounts, you might even have $900 left after getting your equipment, getting your bank account, getting your merchant processing, all of these items set up, getting your DBA set up. You've got around 850 to $900. Now your goal is to spend as little of that as possible and work to get to $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 by spending as little of that as possible. Don't run out and say, how do I spend this? Oh, I can get business cards. Oh, I can get door hangers. Oh, I can spend this on Google ads. I can spend this on, on you know, there's so many things you can spend it on, but frankly, it's not enough to really have a dramatic impact for you. Don't spend it. Spend as little as possible, 25 here, 30 there. Experiment, maybe, maybe. But what you need to do is go to the free ways you can get business. Who, name every dog owner you know through social media, through your personal relationships in the real world. How many dog owners do you know? And, and, and then start to narrow down where they live and how that works to the geographic area. By the way, you want to make sure you've nailed down your geographic area. You can't be driving all over a metropolitan area. You've got to do three, four, five zip codes tops. But who do you know in those three, four, five zip codes that are dog owners? Contact every single one of them and really get active through your social media if you're active on that. Even if you're not, not active, go out of your comfort zone and get active on social media in your community and tell people what you're doing and that you're there. These things are free. Getting, getting out there and screaming at the top of your lungs to anybody that'll listen for free Scream at the top of your lungs what you're doing and who you are in those three, four, five zip codes. That's all free. Spend as little as possible and work your way up to 2,000 bucks and work your way up to 5,000 bucks. And, and as you're working your way up to that, start to strategize your marketing strategy with $5,000 or your marketing strategy with $10,000. That's when you can start to have an impact. And in the meantime, you're building 10 clients, 20 clients. Maybe it takes three months, six months, 20 months, which leads me to a very key point. You want to have a side hustle. This, I should say, this starts out as your side hustle. You want to have a full-time job 
or you want to have through the gig economy, you want to have multiple side hustles, this can't be your only source of income from day one. If it was your only source of income from day one, you're going to you're gonna have a really, really hard time getting it going. It's a slow slogan. You're not going to get rich. You're not going to replace your a full-time job in the first 30 days of your business. It's not that simple. It's low cost startup, but you, but it's a slow it's a slow business. You're going to be putting money into the business. In my case, uh, we were putting money into our business two, three, four, and five years working it before we were able to take any money out of it. And so so think through your marketing strategy with five thousand and ten thousand, and in the meantime, you're hustling, scooping, finding all the business you possibly can. Another point: don't scoop for free. We offer a first scoop free, one scoop. You could do that because you're presuming, especially if you're getting them on a recurring service, you, you got to get them on a recurring service. That's key. But you're getting them on a recurring service, first week, second week, third week, fourth week. Scooping free one week. If you're charging 20 bucks a week, 20 bucks for a single dog, whatever, you, whatever you're charging, let's assume it's 20 bucks. For the month, you're still going to make 60 bucks. If you scoop that first week for free, but don't do a month free and be very careful in how, in, in that, uh, charge low though, charge, charge, charge 10 bucks, 12 bucks. We charge $20 right now, but to start and to build it, build it. The people, you know, they're going to be your easiest, most loyal clients. Start low and build your way up. You can't make money when you have a hundred clients at $12 a client, you're going to have to increase prices. You can't make money 12 bucks a client, 15 bucks a client, even uh, scooping weekly, it's hard to make money when you get 80, 100 clients at that price. But when you're starting out, you're starting out with a thousand bucks. You can scoop and make money for $12 if it's within three, four, five zip codes. You can scoop and make money doing that. And, and, and you should have the time to do that. You have to put the time in to do that. You go and hire employees. Yeah, you can't do that at, at this point. You got to have 10, 15, $20,000 in the bank uh, and or have good, healthy cash flow. That's key, as I mentioned earlier, having your payments set up. You got to have that in, in terms of hiring employees, uh, whether you have 50 customers, 100 customers, or 300 customers when you hire your first employee. Um, another key, build longevity through, through weekly and recurring service. That's key. You don't want to do a bunch of one-time type services maybe early on. Definitely be careful on doing those for free. They take a lot of time. But don't spend your $1,000 on marketing, your first thousand. Spend your time and your network getting those first clients, build it to two and 5,000, and then begin to market. 